Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Online Warriors podcast. The first episode of summer. Officially. It's officially summer. We've talked about this on the air. It's been summer for a while, but now it's official. On yeah, the by the calendar. What? Is it the solar calendar? The some kind of I don't know. natural it's, calendar it's the it is the summer solstice yeah it's based on the moon i thought the lunar calendar right. okay no the i thought the summer solstice has come and gone this... the summer solstice is the 21st yeah I, I didn't think it was based on the moon though i thought it was because that's the day where you have the longest sunlight and then after that it yeah. starts decreasing right correct so we yeah so we have that's that's worth noting we have peaked the days are going to start getting shorter from here which i know Ooh. is nerf bomber's favorite natural phenomenon so yeah you yeah it's all downhill from here until december 21st and then it's going to be uphill for a while what better way to celebrate the summer solstice and the true just full summer experience than talking through a nintendo direct because you could take the switch outside nerd bomber i think you've you've preached the virtues of this on the podcast before of just summertime is a good time to switch because when you can switch outside, you can be outside and play video games at the same time. It's the best of both worlds. It really is. Yeah, provided you have a good stash of citronella candles. I've been getting bit to heck. That's just a side point. But really, I feel like the bugs have been more than more Mosquitoes, than usual this year. they go to like a specific blood type. So maybe they just really like your blood. What's your blood type? I don't know why. I should I know? I'm, I, I don't know my blood type I don't either. Know. I wouldn't feel bad. Yeah. Should I? I was gonna say, should I know it? Because like, and I, if I knew it, I wouldn't say it on the air. I, well, I I don't know. Could I say it? Like, is it an important piece of personal information that someone could I, know about me to like fake being me? I don't, I don't think so, but I don't really know. I mean, there's really so many options. Like, you could basically it's what three different options you could have. Like, but there's well, there's well, then no, the there's more negative than that, there's, and positive. Yeah, there's yeah. a positive, a negative, b positive, b negative, a b positive, a b negative. Oh. And then I think O, yeah, there's O positive and O negative. And I think O negative is the universal donor. And I think that's, I just summarized everything I know about blood types. But and I still don't so, even like, understand what a blood type really someone is. Someone could just take a shot in the dark and who would know? Right. You have a, what, 20% chance or something. Yeah. That's not good math, but you have a good chance of, of figuring it out. I will say Tectic just sent this in our Discord, but I do have to, and we're not sponsored by this company, but I have to give a, a props to Dynatrap. So if you're really getting bit up over there, you should maybe look into investing in one. It's this thing, it has like, it's got a fan and it like generates carbon dioxide. So only bugs that like want to go for blood, basically they want to suck your blood, get drawn to it. And primarily mosquitoes and they get sucked in and then because of the fan, they can't get out. And yeah, haven't we effective. talked about this on? I feel like we have. We talked about this with. I think we talked about it with Stephen Keller. I don't remember if we were on the air or not, um, but we talked about it with him. I believe he was also again preaching the virtues of this machine. So yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm too low tech over here with my little citronella candle. Well, it's one of those things too. So like, I'm not somebody who likes to, you know, go into chemicals. And I know there's a lot of like bug, not citronella. Citronella is fine, but there's like some of those bug repellents now and. They say it's like, oh, well, bug natural. spray is like, yeah. But no, some bug of the bug repellents, bad, like they actually have pesticides that they're just emitting into the air that you're breathing in. And because you're outside, like it's apparently okay to sell. But it just seems weird to me. And I, I don't love that. So I don't know. This is a pesticide free way to maintain. One of the like true markers of becoming an adult and like your life being just generally more sad is when you're a kid your mom is like make sure you put on bug spray before you go in the woods like when you're camping and you just like you just like shower yourself in deep woods off and like deep meat kind of thing and now every time i put bug spray on which granted is probably like two or three times a year i'm always like there's no way this is good and i do it anyways but like there's no way it's good that's why i exclusively spray it on my shoes and then i stop there i mean is that actually a thing that that i do yeah, i mean yeah yes i well, just said it no i but is it like is it is it effective is it preventative i have no idea i just know though like there is that tick first of all lyme disease is terrible but there's also that tick that makes you allergic to red meat and my god if i ever become allergic to red meat because i didn't put off on i will be very salty so i load up if i'm going like camping or something or fishing or anywhere where there's like tall grass off it is and may cancer come and get me after i eat all the red meat i can yeah Ticks are so scary. Like, like, which like red meat causes cancer. So damned if you do. That, that's if fair. You do. That's yeah. Well, everything causes cancer. It's twenty twenty four. Did you guys have any experience with ticks 
on a first or second. It's like I had I went camping once and one of my uncles he got home and he like he found a tick on his body and then there was like a whole big family blast of like everyone check yourself for ticks and like granted you should always be doing that anyways but like it freaked me out man ticks are scary i don't like ticks where it's- i grew up it was a pretty dense deer population and like I, i've had tons of ticks on me at this point in life like tons in all sorts of places because i'm currently it's ironic you said the red meat thing nerd bomber because and i think i told you guys this last week when i saw you i'm starting to think i might be developing some kind of intolerance to red meat which like oh i do be the worst thing to happen to a person my tummy, like, I get really bad stomach pain when I eat a lot of red meat. And, like, there are some things that don't really count. Maybe it's just because they're, like, overprocessed. But, like, um, like a hamburger I can usually get away with perfectly fine. But lately, if I have, like, too much mm-hmm. red meat, like, days in a row where I'll have, like, a hamburger, then I'll have the next day, like, a steak or a hot dog or beef, I yeah. have issues. And especially, I think, one of the worst things is, like, any kind of, like, greasy ground beef. Man, that just messes me up. Yeah, for me, I had last Sunday, I had a steak. And then Tuesday, so two days later, I had a really big burger. And I woke up on Wednesday and I just felt so bad. And I was like, because I, I was already I was already thinking, I was like, I wonder if I'm having red meat problems. And I, now the jury's out. I'll keep the listeners updated, I guess. But getting back to <laughs> Nintendo Direct, from which we digressed a little bit there, there's a lot to go through here. Now, just off the top, they didn't say anything about the Switch 2. I know there are people who were thinking they might. But this was... I mean, you know, you guys know what I'm the most excited about. Let's not belabor the point. This was the first Metroid Prime 4 footage, really, just period. I think the only videos we had gotten before this were just like, here's what the logo might look like. Like, there was no gameplay. We got gameplay. This was the the cherry on top of the Nintendo Direct, which they all... I'm jumping right to the end because they always do that with their Directs. They save the biggest, juiciest announcement they have. And we don't want to do that to you guys. We want to give you guys the biggest, juiciest announcement right Right. up front. They're always always so cutesy about it. They're like, that's it. Oh, wait. One more thing. And then they showed this, you know, probably minute and a half trailer for Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. It is now called Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. I don't even know if we knew that subtitle before. I'm just going to gush for a minute about this. I mean, obviously, this is a day one buy for me. We've now confirmed it's 2025. It's coming out, which is a big deal for me. Day one buy, no matter when it happens. The gameplay that we saw, I imagine was probably just snippets taken from the first five to ten minutes of the game so it didn't spoil anything which i was happy about all it really demonstrated to me was that the core gameplay experience of metroid prime is not going to change which i wouldn't necessarily have expected to but it's really good to get that reassurance i'm just so excited it just it looks like it's going to be everything i want it to be it's basically just going to be metroid prime with better graphics and I want to yeah. I want to intercut you said better graphics and this is this is something that I'm very curious about. So in this entire Nintendo Direct there are a lot of games one that comes to mind we don't have to get into it because it's a game that we know already exists. We've talked about it in our what are you up to use but like Stray coming to the Switch and the mm-hmm. graphics looked horrible Bad. and I played that on the PS5 yeah. so comparably looked horrible. But then when you compare that to Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond looks incredible. And I almost wonder, like, was this footage captured on the Nintendo Switch as we know it? Because to me, based on like a lot of the game footage that we've seen over the years, there aren't that many games that can provide the graphical fidelity that we saw in this trailer. So I'm wondering, like, is this going to be a tweener where they keep saying that Nintendo Switch 2 is on the horizon? So like, was this footage captured on that? Is it going to be on both? I'm genuinely curious because like the graphics looked incredible for a Switch game. And I hate having that qualifier, but like Nintendo is putting out bangers with or without the graphics. I just find it very interesting to hard to believe that this was captured on a standard Switch. I I did think that this showcase as a whole was definitely a nudge to saying we really got to up our graphics because, I mean, you just brought up Stray and then there was a, a, a lot of it was focused on remakes where you didn't need to really right. have the graphic improvements of the next console. So like it was really kind of saying, hey, we're, we're kind of getting to the end of our rope here in a lot less words. I want to talk about Stray because Nerd Bomber, you kind of, you kind of blasted well, past hold on. that. Before, but I, before we get into Stray, I do want to make one question about Metroid Prime 4. So the, sure, sure. the main bad guy, okay, he, he came in and he or, he or she, I don't have No idea who that is. But... The fact yeah. of the matter is they seem to be uh, controlling some of the Metroids. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be... Finish well, the question. Let me stop you right there. I, I don't know anything about the franchise. 
Like I, that person walks in, I'm supposed to know who they are as a fan of the franchise. I know I'm supposed to know who they are. I know that was a big moment for a lot of like diehard been with it through the super Nintendo days, like fans of the franchise. I'm tactic. I'm surprised you didn't know who that was, but I had no idea. But anyways, f- finish, finish your question. I'm sorry. I was going to say, do you think there was going to be linked to some of the previous games with that person? I didn't want to spoil it. I think that's likely from what I have read and this, I haven't played corruption which is the third one. I haven't played it in so long. I think I only played it once or twice and I played it a very long time ago. I guess that character made a cameo in the la- in the at the end of that last game, but I don't remember it. So the short answer to your question is probably yes. But yes, that was an important moment in the trailer too of being like, hey, the Metroids, and there's always going to be Metroids, of course, but it's important to see them as early as we saw them. I'm very excited. You know, fighting space pirates is one thing. And you, you again, you know you're going to do that in a Metroid Prime game. But to me, the more exciting stuff is the exploration, it's the scanning, it's the discovering new creatures and discovering the weapons to dis- to kill them and to open new locations and, you know, classic Metroid stuff. We didn't see as much of that, but I think even based on that little tiny ending piece where it showed 2025, like, I think we're going to get a lot of that. I'm fairly confident that it's going to go in the right direction. But yes, it did look graphically very good. I think it could be a tweener, as you put oh, it. Oh, weird. Bomber. They're uh, saying that it that it's Silux, which is one of the bounty hunters in, in one of the precincts. But he looks, it, it looks nothing like Silux. Okay. I, again, I could, yeah, couldn't say. But I'm very excited for it. Now, again, going over to Stray, because I, I put in my notes, Nerd Bomber, because I know you played Stray, and I believe you were a, a fan of it. Based on your experience with Stray, which I think you played that on the PS5? I did, or was yes. It the X-Bone? PS5. Okay. I guess if you had, the, if you could undo that experience and you had the choice to do it on the PS5 versus on the Switch, my question is, because yeah, there's certainly going to be a graphical downgrade. Do you think that game would play well on handheld? Do you think there's merit to playing it? Because uh, I, mean, I mean, if I wanted to play it, I have the choice. So do you have I... a strong opinion either way on where it should be played? I think I would play it on the PS5. It's just, the graphical downgrade was maybe it's just because I'm so used to it on the PS5, having played it myself, watched Tactic play it. Like, right. it was kind of brutal. It was kind of like, what did you do to my boy? So, sure. Yeah. And there's also like fun, cutesy things that, like, with the, the PS5 dual sense, when you're pawing something and scratching, there's the, the, the feedback on the, the triggers. When you meow, like, there are sounds that come out of the controller that I think just add, like, a really cool element to it. Like, I'm not going to lie to you here. And don't get me wrong. I love the Switch. But when you ask me in an ideal world if I'm going to play the same game on one versus the other, I will almost always pick the non-handheld console just because there's yeah. better graphics just there it's it's a better experience but that's why nintendo switch like it's really good for the games that nintendo puts out because it doesn't a there's no competition you can't play a zelda game you can't play a mario game you can't play donkey kong etc etc on any of those other consoles but also like the games with lower graphical needs it doesn't matter where you play them so that's where the right. nintendo switch shines i'm not a huge graphics yeah, I mean- tabs anymore these days but like stray was such a beautiful artfully designed world it was tough to see it in like pixelated wonder well and i you know i didn't think too much about the controller when considering this question but it's a huge deal i mean the dual sense is an absolute triumph and in a game like that i can imagine it playing a pretty major role so you know zooming out a little bit and looking at this showcase holistically you know tactic you already mentioned a lot of remakes a lot of remakes a lot of we're updating it to make it better graphically or we're doing x and y to it It also a lot of turn-based games i noticed a lot of turn-based games i think that's which we can go through because they were a lot of remakes like i'm not saying that turn-based is outdated but a lot of like the heyday of turn-based games was 10 20 years ago you know that's when we were getting a lot of those pixel-based turn-based japanese games and we're just remaking those and that's why like i i don't want to like shade on this nintendo showcase but i de- did feel like a little bit like oh, okay so i'm just getting 45 minutes of mostly remakes here and we know that nintendo thrives on releasing games over and over and over again getting us to buy them again and there are a few of these games that i probably will buy again but it's just like man I, it's kind of the same thing with like movies where everything is a sequel or a remake give me give me new stuff it's be- and, and i think it's because they're coming to the to the end of their technological capacity to handle these new games that could well be and, and like like i guess 
I have broader questions because, yeah, I mean, just to name a couple, like, I think Nintendo World Championships NES edition, like, I think what they're doing there is a very cool idea, and it's a good way to make what is essentially, it's not even a remake, it's just a port, make it seem fresh to add the speedrunning kind of capabilities to it and tracking and, and competing with your friends. Like, I think it, I think it's a very cool idea, but I mean, we had that, we had obviously the additions to Nintendo Switch Online, which we always get a handful of those every direct we had the Marvel versus Capcom thing. Dragon it, it Quest. It has me wondering, Dragon Quest, like, it, it has me wondering, like, in particular with, with the three I mentioned, Dragon Quest is another one, but, like, why is it that it seems like, like, we don't see Xbox or Sony do this ever. We don't see them say, hey, we're bringing back these games that you loved from the original PlayStation or from even further back than that. Like, well, I think- does Nintendo own all of these properties? Like, in particular, the Marvel versus Capcom thing, it's like, they can't own all of that stuff. We they're do. just going back and getting it so like it, it's it, the thing it's all very interesting to me i think we do see it it's just not necessarily a like high point of showcases anymore like you look at xbox and during the xbox one era a huge leg that they were standing on was look at all of these backward compatible games from the original xbox all the way through this 360 which i know that's only two generations but like they made that stuff backwards compatible and they were really pumping that and now it just it kind of exists and so they don't need to keep re-releasing it right. you can just go back and play it and kind of the same thing with sony like we they did just announce like sly cooper is coming to playstation plus and their ps2 streaming backwards compatibility what however that works I know it's a little bit more convoluted, but like I think the reason why it's not at the forefront is because Xbox and Sony aren't necessarily selling these new games. They're just saying, hey, now you can play them on the new console. Like you we've made them. them available. You already right. have them. Whereas Nintendo tends to repackage and sell. And like I guess it's it's working, it's making them money. People keep buying them, so why wouldn't you, I guess? Yeah, and again, like I, I think world championships is a cool idea, but like, yeah, if you peel back the paper thin layer on it like there's really no dev work that they did they basically just took a bunch of games that already existed and put a wrapper around them it's very clever but i i I can see you feeling you know really one of two ways about it and yeah you mentioned turn-based being kind of a bygone thing i mean i think there are some games here that are a little bit on the newer side that are still doing like i don't know if turn-based is a totally dead genre necessarily it's not a genre for me so i will say a lot of those games and we could talk through them a lot of them kind of washed over my eyeballs i want to you know i've already kind of led the discussion through a couple here what are tactic coming over to you something that we haven't yet mentioned i know there's a lot that really stuck out to you as wow i need this or wow i hated this i guess so the thing that like honestly surprised me um, as far as my interest goes was the mario and luigi's game mario's voice you could tell that the voice actor has changed but like is what it is he's got to retire some point right not a big deal this comes out november 7th it's mario and luigi brothership and the thing the, the reason why it stuck out to me is because it gave me it takes two vibes and like that was like peach couch co-op with your significant other it had a number of different gameplay mechanisms different things you can do to work together and and progress the combat on the throughout the story was constantly changing sometimes there were some turn-based things sometimes that there were traditional fighting things sometimes it was just straight up puzzles and so they gave you like a really diverse looking game with a lot of different opportunities to work together and this looked good can i be that guy for a second yes something i it looked it looked totally fine i couldn't shake the that mario and luigi had no color in their eyes like like there there was a a slight graphical shift with this game that i don't know why they did it like it's one thing to like make something like paper mario which is like very different on purpose like a this doll's felt like, eyes just it felt kind of like, like someone dogs. else well it, it it felt like someone else who has never made mario and luigi games was tasked with making like from a different company was tasked with making a mario luigi game and they no, took like i think it's just like, they took a different art style just to kind of keep it fun and fresh i mean it's certainly you know i think it's stealing elements of the past mario games that like it's going to make it very successful couch co-op i'm never going to say no to this should be a hit but why can't his eyes be a little bit blue i like that about him like it was it was a really dumb I don't, little doesn't, thing but it doesn't it feel very i saw immediately i want to see dark brown eyes like a real and that real plumber is you know that what the, i mean i can't i knew mario's eyes are blue i can't picture the color of luigi's eyes someone will have to tell me in the comments blue. or something but i thought that was very interesting nerd bomber what uh what russell your jimmy's here 
I was actually super excited about Super Mario Party Jamboree. And so this was something actually I had never played any of the Super Mario Party games. I kind of just rolled my eyes at them every time somebody looked back on them with nostalgia. And then I still am, by the way, rolling your eyes or looking back on them with nostalgia. I'm this. Well, why, why don't I let you provide your opinion on this and then I'll, I'll come in because I this is my they killed my boy moment in the showcase what they i think what they've done to the mario party franchise is criminal but please <laughs> well so the la- the first time i really experienced it and the last time so tactic had oh my god what is it is it your gamecube nintendo no. 64 Nin- baby nintendo 64 y- you can tell how into nintendo i was before i got a game boy and then i jumped right to like the ds and now the switch was like my first nintendo true console but i'd never played super mario party and then he received that as a gift and we started playing it and i actually had a lot of fun with it like the board game slash mini game competition was just i don't know i guess i just kind of assumed that it was kind of dumb but it gave some purpose to having the mini games instead of and i'm not saying like a slew of mini games aren't fun but having a purpose where it's not just like oh play three mini games in a row and see who's gonna win like you still have to like move around the board and have a little bit of strategy gave it more depth than i assumed that the game had and so i don't know seeing a new version of it i'm actually excited about this and also maybe it'll make and i'm stealing this from tactic but he said this maybe it'll make the other super mario party that came out on switch go on sale sale, yeah and then Uh, i'll be able to buy that and play that and not feel guilty about spending like 60 bucks well the thing that i thought that might have piqued your interest on this one is you're a big kart racer i am and this had showcased a lot of that in addition to the standard board gameplay so there there appears to be there's going to be some kart racing mini games and that's kind of neat now, what Illegal is going to say about killing his boy is the earlier games, they, they they did a really good job at keeping it so that not one person can kind of run away with the game and just become unbeatable. It's That's almost what I'm saying. As, as long as they kind of like level set that, I think this could be a smash hit. The, so Mario Party 1 and 2, which I believe for, there might have been a third one on the N64, but the first two in particular are masterpieces. Let me be clear. Like, I think they're fantastic. Mario Party 1 holds up every time I play it. Fantastic. I love it to death. Playing the more recent ones, in particular the ones on the Wii, were terrible. Uh, I think on the Switch, they've gotten a little bit better. It's less so that one person can run away with it. And it's more so that, like, Nerd Bomber, I can appreciate what you're saying of, like, it shouldn't just be about who wins the mini games. There should be an element, like, the, the board game aspect of it is supposed to add a different element. And it does. And it did in the first one and the second one. But at some point, they turned that board game element into basically an RNG. And like, it doesn't, ma- it, it, they made it so it doesn't matter if you're good at the mini games or not. It's honestly a little bit of the same reason I hate Mario Party. It's like, or sorry, Mario Kart these days is that if you're a good driver in Mario Kart, it doesn't always matter. <laughs> um, No, so like, I, I have but- to I have to call some attention to things going on beyond this behind the scenes with mario kart that unless you're like really into the kart scene you probably don't know what's happening so as you are a better driver you're actually put in a position where like there's skill balancing in mario kart like your power-ups that you'll get as you're in like first through third are not as good as the power-ups you get when you're in the back of the race and that's very intentionally done and has always been the case Fun fact. Yeah, I think you're wrong yeah, with this. And cake. I and I don't li- and I don't like it. I think. But that's yeah, always like been it. the that's always been the case. You're not you're not playing with the the Mario Party and the kart racers. They're they're not designed to play with the person who's the most skilled. They're designed to play with a large group of friends who have varying ranges in in exposure to this game, and everyone can have fun. This is a bad take. I will say I do understand though why you feel some like ire towards Mario Kart because your wife is stupid good at that game and playing She's with her it. like you you get wrecked by her every time it just it, it is what it is. Mario Party is definitely the one that I'm, I'm not saying just more you like about we because... also got wrecked by your wife so and in the game Mario Party is the one I'm more upset about because like Mario Party is like it's just so much more swingy like you're like cruising along doing great and then someone hits like a chance time or something and it's like oh you just lost all of your coins and all of your stars and it's like i didn't do anything <laughs> like it, it i don't know like i said the rng of it and it got way worse for a good stretch of time i think it's getting better now there was a phase of time in the mario party games where like you actually wouldn't all move independently you were all in like this like weird cart thing and you would all move in the same direction and at yeah, the same that was time bad. And they've done away with that now, thank God. That was, I think, where it got 
particularly bad. And like the thing with Mario Party is like the mini games are the core gameplay experience with it and those like these new ones look fun i'm sure they're going to be amazing and like i've played super mario party i don't own it but i played it and the mini games are great like i'm never i'm never down on those but like i just think they i think the like board game part of the experience as you put it like i think it just needs some attention and i think it is getting that but it really just soured me to the whole franchise in a in a in much more significant a way than mario kart which like i still play mario kart pretty regularly and i enjoy it but mario party i often stay away from because it just makes me sad okay what else do we got let's do we'll do one more and then we'll take a quick break here but i want to talk about maybe we can all go around and like remake that you're most excited for if you're excited for any luigi's mansion 2 i'd never played like i don't know exactly what happened with that i just kind of missed it and i played one and loved it i played three and loved it so depending on how much two costs like this is uh, maybe the only remake that they listed that i'm like oh yeah i like i might actually pick this up and play it because i'm fairly sure fairly sure i'm going to enjoy it were there any remakes listed for you guys that stuck out in that way or was it just kind of that i'm excited about donkey kong country returns hd this was a game that i never played on the wii or i think they said it also came out on the ds didn't play it i honestly I don't think I've really ever played like a Donkey Kong Country game, but I'm excited about this simply for the fact that it's just another co-op game that I haven't touched, at least. I don't know, Tectic, if you've played this, but we lament the death of couch co-op all the time. And so every couch co-op game that exists, I'm assuming this probably won't release at a $60 price point. So I'm hoping this is just a like not free, but like a cheap entry that I can just play some couch co-op with my boy Tectic yeah i mean nintendo it feels like is definitely doing the most to like keep couch co-op alive (laughs) like i I guess guess that's my perspective but like yeah there were more than a couple of games here that they were maybe not necessarily highlighting that but you could see that it was a capability and we just don't often get that so i was happy to see that too tactic any remakes that i don't know know, if i want to call them curiosity call them remakes but definitely opening up access to some of the old games so zelda link to the past four swords the zero mission remake Torok and Perfect Dark all coming to the Switch. I've said this before. I'm vehemently against the subscription service to play these games. I hate, I don't need more subscriptions in my life. But if that's your only way to get these games, if you don't have these old consoles, then I understand it. So it is cool to see people getting exposure to the game like Four Swords, a game that I played with my link cable and friends on my Game Boy Advanced, which like chef's kiss that game is fantastic zero mission i've i've played that recently a awesome game torok i didn't get exposed to till gamecube i thought it kind of sucked because it was like trying too hard graphically when the capabilities weren't there so that one i can really care less about and then we've talked about perfect dark so it kind of makes sense with yeah. the remake that um is coming with a sequel on that to for people to get access to the original it looks like perfect dark is so fun like, i don't think i played i played perfect dark zero which was on the 360 i never played the original it looks really fun i did for the for this stuff i just wrote down in my notes gba equals tactic because there were two game boy advance games and yeah it sounds like you've played both of them but um always fun to get those that little sprinkling i agree with you that it's it shouldn't be subscription based it should just be like here play here, these give us a dollar and you you can get it if they want money coming in but like because right. no one's no one's playing these like month over month over month over month. That's dumb. Nintendo, you're dumb. Right. You heard it first, Nintendo. You heard it first here. You're dumb. We'll take a short break now and come back to talk through more of the games in the Nintendo Direct. Before we do that, I've already mentioned Steven in the episode. Uh, he got a little shout out when we were talking about that bug trap thing earlier. But uh, Steven, here's to you, my friend. You've been supporting us on the show for quite a while now at the producer level, the night level on our Patreon, which is the highest of our three tiers. And we greatly appreciate that, sir. And I do call you sir because you are a knight. At the night level, Steven gets access to the monthly secret segment and vlog on our show, of course. But also, he gets the occasional guest spot. He gets this producer shout out every week. And he also gets input into the weekly game segment, which is returning this week. And Nerd Bomber is hosting. There's also a squire level of support on our Patreon, which gets you access to the monthly secret segment and vlog. And a page level, which gets you access to the monthly secret segment. So you can head over to patreon.com slash online warriors podcast check out uh, some of the stuff we have going on over there those three levels of support and consider giving back to the show hopefully you're enjoying what you're listening to and you feel inclined to help us keep the mics on and powered thanks again to steven we will be right back to talk more nintendo direct 
Welcome aboard to Vag Airlines. We are cruising here at uh, 40,000 feet. That might be too many feet, but what do I know? I'm not really an airplane. I'm a podcaster. Actually, I'm a co-podcaster. I'm the co-host of uh, several episodes of the Too Vague Podcast. If you haven't heard it, you're missing out. Check out the Too Vague Podcast. Any place podcasts do whatever they do. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. For your continued safety, Too Vague Airlines requires that you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times while seated. But... While you're seated, you can tune in to the Too Vague Podcast, T-W-O-V-A-G-U-E, on your favorite podcast services, and enjoy the flight. Welcome back to the second half of our Nintendo Direct breakdown. I want to talk about basketball, because as Nerd Bomber and Technic know, we recently got a basketball net in our driveway, and... I have to say the basketball update for Nintendo Switch Sports that they showed off. Uh, I want it. I don't have Switch Sports. And Get it? Switch like, is this going to so be good. the thing that Switch Sports? Is it really vo- good? There's a volleyball game. It's so good. It is so yeah, good. It, it looks, really is so good. the The basketball looks great. This is a game that like you could bump like, set yeah, and like, spike. How much does this game cost right now? Enough. It costs enough. It's enough. No, it's not sixty dollars. I think Nintendo Switch Sports is it's, like forty, maybe. 50 bucks it's 50 bucks which like yeah i can probably justify that honestly you get it looked amazing Wii sports what if you tennis. go half seas with your wife no, you get Wii sports tennis back you get a bitchin volleyball game bitchin i think it has there's it like has a sword golf. game there's a sword game it has golf in it now i believe the bowling looks good bowling it's got bowling like come on man this is like peak yeah. nintendo it, motion i mean sports. bowling on Wii was always good like that's just a staple I, I, oh, vote I can get you a do dig- I can get a digital I can get a digital for forty dollars, which like I can probably stomach getting this game digital. I would I would tell you And there's like, like neat achievements and collectibles. It's just it's it's a very good game. Just go ahead and, and do it right now. Just go ahead and do it right now. No, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm no I'm not gonna do it right now. That's a bridge too far. I see what you're trying to do, but uh I'm not gonna do it right now. But I, I'm definitely very that. interested. Quote among one of the very best games on Switch, a step above its predecessors. These are all the like the scrolling headlines on Nintendo Switch Switch Sports website. So the volleyball game is in- intense. It is quite good. I loved it. Still love it. Google kind of want to play it right now. Google gives it a three point four, which feels aggressively low and mean. It sounds. It seems like people being like, "Hey, the, like people who aren't good at sports being like, I hate this game." Which like maybe I mean, I'm not good at sports. Maybe I'll hate it. Did you like Wii yeah, Sports? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested. I didn't own Wii Sports ever. What? I didn't play enough of it to like it or dislike did it. Did you have I a just, Wii? I don't know. Yeah. It yeah. came with the Wii. I don't know. How did you not have it? I got, Well, okay, I guess we had it and I just never played it. I don't know. To, in my in my brain, we, we never had it, uh, which is fine. Like the only thing that I don't know this that I missed that much. F- no, you did. Wii Sports is like a staple of... It was fine. No, I played it. 2000s household. Baseball. Yeah, I played... Boxing. Yeah, I played all of those things. I played the bowling. I played the tennis. Look, I will add Switch Sports to my short list here. But also, let's talk about Looney Tunes. What, what is it called? Looney Tunes Sports? <laughs> I don't even know what the game is called. It's just like play sports. Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. Play sports is Looney Tunes and occasionally an anvil will fall on you. Is basically the gist of this. This looks super fun. I would not pay that much for this. And I also feel like the timing of this coming out is very strange. Like I don't, I feel like Looney Tunes hype is at an all-time low. The vibe of that one, interestingly enough, did not give me Nintendo Switch Sports vibe. It gave me Wii Sports vibes. Like it, it felt like it was like a previous console generation game. It feels more like Mario Strikers to me. Of like, there's not going to be any motion control in it. It's just going to be like you're playing team sports and you happen to be Looney Tunes, and that makes it f- more fun in some way. Which I'm not like minimizing that. It looks like it could be really fun, but I just like if this would have like coincided with like one of the Space Jam games coming out or movies coming out, it felt like it would have made a lot more sense. Coming out now, I'm like I don't know what kind of Looney Tunes type you're trying to pick up on, but it's not working on me. Other games, and we may start rapid firing a little bit here. Well, there's a big one here that we have not talked about, and I'm not a big Zelda fan, so the I'm a Zelda little surprised one? Zelda one. that Tectic hasn't brought this up. I just haven't gotten to it. I didn't realize we were hitting rapid fire so quickly. Well, let's, yeah, let's, let, well, I, I forgot about the existence of Zelda because I'm also not a Zelda fan. Let's get to the Zelda thing now because Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom 
looks like a fairly significant departure from it's, the past two Zelda entries. It's interesting. So in so the, the the full game name is Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Zelda gets her own game now. Yay. However, her powers are so so Link is typically the sword shield combat, you know, sometimes a bow if you're feeling frisky. And but her power is she gets like a staff where she can duplicate object to kind of solve movement challenges and she can kind of fight herself so like she can make rocks appear and then throw the rocks at enemies and then duplicate those enemies to fight for her which i think is sort of a disservice because in previous installments there's been instances where zelda goes undercover as Sheik and is like a stealthy combat fighter and we've just never been able to play as Sheik besides in like smash or whatever and like this right. this could have been an opportunity where they really could have shown her amazing magic abilities and her amazing combat abilities. She's just overall an amazing character. And they're like, well, actually, you're going to just make tables. Well, no. <laughs> you get to also make other stuff like clones of enemies and then control them to do your bidding. Yeah. Like, it, it's more than just making tables. I will say... It would have been cool to see her have a little bit more combat ability than just spawning things. Like, they could help her, maybe. But, like, she also has her own powers. But maybe that'll come. Maybe that'll be something, like, she learns and develops and they don't want to give it away. Yeah, like, I I see your point, Tectic. Like, I totally get your point. But I like the concept. I like the making echoes that, like, even just the tables, like, climbing up the cliff. I was like, that's it's a cool idea. And you'd be excited to unlock all the echoes that you're certainly going to unlock. Graphically, it's a very big departure. But, like, again, people don't care about the graphics in these games. Like, I don't know that people don't, care much that Breath of the Wild looked the way it did. It well, looked beautiful. So here's but, the thing. I, I don't know a whole lot about Zelda, to be honest. But Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are different types of entries in this franchise. I would say this art style is a lot like, oh, Tactic, you got to help me out here. Was it Link's Awakening? They remade it. And yeah. it, it looks more like the top-down type Zelda. And... The animation works. I Well, because I think yeah. they've kind of split the franchise where there's obviously where the story will go in the Breath of the Wild now offshoot of things. But they're still doing that top down 3D, 2D style for games like this moving forward, too. So I don't think it's a huge departure because this style does exist on the Switch already. It's more just like the franchise splitting almost. I just want like to see Zelda be more badass. What what a you kind of just brought this to my mind. I think we mentioned Dragon Quest already. What does HD two D mean? Do you think you guys know what that means? It's high definition, it like background, but the gameplay is two D. Yeah, it's like instead of pixel art, they're doing like HD graphics because the original like Dragon Quests were pixel art, and now this is like HD. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of just using the name and the definition, but like I don't yeah. know. But you know what I'm trying to say though, like hand drawn art style. They kept the 8-bit characters in there, but everything else that happened was like what uh, other Switch games would look like. Let's talk about Lego Horizon, because I'm just like, I I don't want to say confused. That's not the right word. But like, it's just very interesting to me to see the Horizon IP in a Nintendo Direct showcase, even if it's couched in the whole Lego thing, which like, yeah, like, I think on its face, this looks like just another Lego game. When we first saw this, the first thing I... I did was I looked over to Nerd Bomber and I said, does this take away from Horizon? Because I haven't played it yet. And she said no. So multiple multiple things I, here. I wouldn't say it takes away. Yeah, I mean... So first of all, we, did, we didn't get a chance to talk about the one PlayStation showcase that happened. Like there was just a butt ton of news the one week. And it like came in under the wire like the day that we were recording. So we didn't get a chance to talk about it. But we did see this, I believe, presented then. Or maybe it was during like the summer of game showcase but we saw this at one point before but they went more in depth in this nintendo direct and i don't necessarily think it takes away like it definitely cutifies horizon zero dawn for sure like yeah they have aloy in a banana suit at one point but i don't know i think if it can bring more people to the world of horizon zero dawn especially since they have the tv show on the horizon pun intended nice I don't think it's a bad thing. I think because the Horizon Zero Dawn games are, I won't call them like violent, but I mean, you are, you know, battling and doing combat with dinosaurs and also people at times. Like you can kill people in the Horizon games. So I think they're kind of making it a little bit more family friendly. I don't really know the intent or reason why you would want to do that, but maybe it's just to gain more exposure to the franchise before the show comes out. Sort of like, fallout like they obviously saw a boon with the fallout games when the tv show hit and clearly you're not going to have kids playing that 
But just, you know, giving this franchise another iteration, another outlet for people to play it in. I mean, from Sony's like, standpoint, like... It's an interesting parallel. Like, there's not a Fallout Lego game. But, but like, it does feel like the Horizon IP has kind of been parceled out to, in, into various places because Sony feels like it's a good IP, and it is. But, like, cutifying it, as you say, it does feel a little weird because, like, ever since I've known the Horizon franchise, and I've played a little bit of the first game, I did like it, I didn't finish it, but, like, it feels like a franchise that really wants to be taken seriously. Yeah. And, like, obviously Lego, like, you know, they've done Star Wars and Harry Potter and marvel and like at various points all of those franchises have also wanted to be taken seriously but they're also now at a point in their life cycle where it's okay to do the lego cutification and like tongue-in-cheekiness of it like i don't know that the horizon franchise is really at that point <laughs> so like i think that is it's a good point i of, think like, this felt a little strange i think she brought a, a really really good point of this is a move to bring people to the franchise because not only does it make the bar a little lower to entry for like younger folks but also they added local co-op which is like you can now bring like parent kid playing and maybe their parent likes the franchise and now they can have a bonding moment with their children where it's not straight up murder and like one of the things too so horizon it weirdly toes the line because if you look at it from an outsider's perspective you're not necessarily playing the game and seeing the combat where you're killing other humans but in like commercials and stuff it looks like you're just battling giant robot dinosaurs and to a kid like maybe your kid is interested because dinosaurs and robots put together like it kind of looks like Godzilla it's kind of cool so maybe it's just a way to you know I don't want to say dumb down the franchise but I guess I just make it a little bit more accessible because at its heart if you take away a lot of the interpersonal conflicts and human element of the game like robot dinosaurs are cool and kids like that but also another side of it too like i think sony is trying to establish main characters like almost like icons for their brand if you're looking at what they're doing with you know astro or astrobot and like they're cutifying in astrobot kratos and aloy again like it seems like they're trying to make a mascot and maybe this is their chance to try to see how like how aloy plays as one of the cutified mascots I'm like Nathan Drake too. Like they made the Uncharted movie. Yeah, they're 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 trying to spread the wings of the brand in various ways, and this is just the latest way. Horizon is a franchise that I definitely want another crack at. I want to I want to try to play through the first game again because I really liked what I was doing. I, but yeah, this, so this this Lego rendition happened. Now I think we're probably at the point where we can rapid fire a bunch of this stuff. Almost. Unless that- we're like, <laughs> okay, go ahead. You got one more big one. The, the well, big to me. So Mio Memories in Orbit. Everyone knows that how yeah, critically acclaimed Hollow Knight was. This looked a lot like Hollow Knight. And I'm a big, you can't have enough side-scroller, fast-moving adventure games. And this fit that genre. This looked excellent. This um, had a bit of a cuteness to it, but it also had a bit of a, a dark veil behind it. I definitely want to see more of this. And I'm interested to see how it's received. Yeah, I think the traversal here looked very interesting. I knew the, I knew you were going to get sucked into this one. I think I did too. It does have kind of it, the vibe is kind of hard to put your finger on. It was a little ethereal. It looks like there's going to be no no dialogue or speaking at all in this game, which I'm not necessarily against. So yeah, I, I was I was going to make sure to hit this one too. This one looks very cool, no then, doubt. And then the other one I want to mention is, and this isn't a new game release, but it's an update to an existing franchise. Among Us is getting new character roles that are pretty slick. So there's both a you can be a crewmate and do things like tag someone if you're suspicious so that you can have them you know have them being tracked to see if they're, where they're going and if they're doing anything sketch like sabotaging and such and then on the other side of it if you're the bad guy you could now have an ability to kill someone and then go into basically camouflage mode so people can't even see you running from the scene so those two abilities can go hand in hand right if you had a tracker on someone someone dies in a certain room so on and so forth um, so it's interesting to see how that they're one, that they're continuing to develop this franchise with additional items and, and things, but also like what this extra elements are going to add to the gameplay. I'm, I'm very excited for that because I've always loved Among Us. A couple of, I guess, I guess I'll call them detective e games I wanted to shout out. What they've added to Disney Illusion Island, I have no experience with this game. Uh, I don't know if either of you do, but like, I thought the like connecting the pins to display where clues are, I thought that was a cool mechanic and I'm, I'm always down for that sort of thing. And then Ace Attorney, uh, which I know, I've known of the existence of this game. 
or game series for quite a while. I think after my recent experience with Case of the Golden Idol on the Switch, I'm a lot more interested in maybe trying this out, depending. It looks a little corny at well, various points, but... I thought this was for you based on their use of dramatic pauses. You are a you are a slut for dramatic pausing, as evident of like the time that when I'm editing these podcasts, you like you really dramatic pause to the extent that the I love users, putting in dead air. The listeners have no idea how much you actually leave me with because I edit a lot of it out. And so I like to think I'm thinking, but maybe that's probably not always No, you're 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 in it for the drama. You're you are you you, you build suspense, trust me. But one of the things that I thought was fantastic in this trailer, they're like, you'll be able to solve things with the power of logic. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just killed me. I was like, yeah, no shit. I was definitely into that. The last one that I definitely want to make sure I mention, even though I don't have any interest in playing it, I'm always up for a new Lord of the Rings game. And by up for it, I mean, I'm not going to play this. This basically Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game. Looks like it's basically Middle Earth Animal Crossing, which no, like it's, it's Middle Earth Disney makes Disney sense. Dreamlight Valley, it, it, it just because of the 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 IP tiebacks, that's that's the the closer vibe in my opinion. Like I said, I'm I'm not going to play that. I think it's there's just a rich world with Middle Earth for you to play around in, and this is just one way. You so think Tom's going to be in this world? No, 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 Tom. Probably just a bunch of Hobbit stuff, a lot of eating. I mean, they kind of they kind of harped on that in the trailer. Anything else we want to make sure we mention? There's there's a, a fair number of games I didn't hit here, but we got to keep the party going. Nerd Bomber, anything else you want to make sure we hit? My only quick comment is, what the heck is the new Denpa Men? <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, I, I also got. didn't I also didn't really know. I, I for the notes, my notes on that one I just wrote turn-based island decorating. I'm out. That's With your I mean. Nintendo Mies. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but like their heads Looked are very shaped strange. like beans i don't know i'm out there were a lot of games that again i think a lot because turn-based isn't for me but also just for various reasons like i would write big long chunks of notes for certain games and then for other games like the hundred line last defense academy i just wrote wtf well the hundred that, that was basically very a, strange it was just it looked like a swarm fighting game it's just beat a hundred swarms and you're done it didn't look like there was much more to it there was another game that i was surprisingly interested in it looked good it looked and, and it looked it's it's sort of a deviation from my normal games that i do play but romancing saga 2 revenge of the seven it had like the the premise is you there's these seven heroes and they all went to the dark side and you have to like take on each hero and you can you can take on each one any different way and each way in which you traverse the story how you choose would kind of impact i guess what your loadouts are who's your allies who's your not your allies and how you take over the world it, it almost seemed like it was a video game version of risk with a with a nice fantasy element to it and this this was surprising that I, on how interested in it i was and i think i'm going to give this a play it's another one where i, I, I want to know a little bit about romantic saga one so, assuming such a game exists but yeah it was it was one of a fair few turn-based games I, I think also before we move on we should shout out funko fusion which we talked about on the show before look like crap but we saw some gameplay this time the graphics don't look very good it looks like a well, lego game light kind of I, I, w- I would say it's more or less what i expected to see it's based on everything i know about it but i guess we'll see what happens with that one as it continues to develop one more and then you got you can go rapid fire Fermaga, Fermaja it's farmagia or whatever yeah the underworld of felicidad where you grow dogs and then those dogs come out of the garden and then you can use them for combat and then fuse all of your dogs to make a dragon it looked very unhinged <laughs> like it was almost like digimon where it's like you have this glob and then that glob involves into a dinosaur and then that dinosaur evolves into a tank and we're like what what the hell is happening right now <laughs> This was also one where I noticed a couple times I was like, well, because there's and probably because there was like six billion foxes on the screen at one point. But I was like, this game's going to have frame rate issues because I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how to scale a game when you have when you have six million foxes all striking the well, same yeah, enemy at once. If you're rocking six million. You're foxes, bound to have them. You're going to fuse them into a dragon. Obviously, it's true. I have very foolish of me. Yeah, so there's only a few left we didn't mention. I'm not I'm not going to go through them, but hit us up on Twitter, at OWLU86, at OWTactic, at OWNerdBomber, and our main show account, at OnlineWarriors1. If we miss something you were super jazzed about, hit us up, tell us that we suck. And if we hit on something that you're excited about and we're excited about, tell us that we don't suck, etc. So yeah, Nintendo Direct rolled a lot of stuff out. And now we're going to roll out 
some details about our personal lives in What Are You Up To Wednesday. This is the part of the show where we tell people what we've been up to. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nerd Bomber to kick us off here. All right. So I feel like Tectic and I have a combined thing this week because we saw a couple movies, saw a couple kids movies, and we saw Inside Out and Garfield, Inside Out 2, I should say. And I feel like we have a lot of things to say. So I'll I'll start with the one that I know Tectic doesn't like because I'll give it a little bit more favorable review. The Garfield movie was better than I expected it to be. And that is a hot take. And I know if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, the audience score is like in the 80s. The critic score is like in the 30s. We looked this up when we saw the movie. I think that this movie was better than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be straight trash. It is a star-studded movie, to be completely honest with you. There's Chris Pratt, Samuel L. Jackson, Hannah Waddingham, Bowen Yang. There's other people. Who Who is the guy that plays in Ted Lasso as well? Shoot, help. Roy. Yes. Roy, Roy Kent. The guy who plays Brett Goldstein. Like, Oh, geez. Yeah, there what are, is this? Nicholas Goldstein, Holt right. is in the movie. Like, there are a lot of people in this movie as voice actors. It is an animated movie through and through. But, like, I don't know. I was expecting this entire movie to just be, like, lasagna and Mondays suck and all that kind of stuff. But there it's was... a good part of it. it okay, sure. <laughs> but, like, there was an actual storyline to this movie. It wasn't just Garfield sitting around his house eating lasagna the entire time. The movie is centered around his dad who basically in the beginning of the movie abandons him to fend for himself on the street and then garfield finds john and odie and then has his whole new life but then his dad comes back into his life and they have to go on this adventure to basically get his dad out of trouble and he's very you know begrudgingly involved in a heist from a dairy farm. The overarching theme was more serious than I thought it was going to be. It's basically talking about, you know, adoptive lifestyle, I guess, when you're a kid who your, you know, birth parents end up giving you up for adoption, the feelings that kind of go along with that and feeling like they maybe necessarily didn't love you, but from the, you know, birth parents standpoint, that might not be the case. It was deeper than I expected from a Garfield movie. I would not say this is a world beater of a movie, but like it it was better than I expected. Yeah, I, I don't think it was bad. I'd say it was a 50 or 60% in, in my personal tomato meter. Like I would never recommend it to anybody necessarily, but like if you find yourself having to watch the movie, so it wasn't that bad. So we watched two movies and comparing this to Inside Out 2, Inside Out 2 invokes emotion. This was very face value, I thought. I think it's it's a lot more fun for the children. It's it's not a lot of stuff for the adults. There are some adult themes that you can follow along as Nirbar mentioned, but it's just it's just kind of okay. It's capital F fine. It's my stance. Yeah. And but- Chris Pratt his voice was just Chris Pratt voice, if you're wondering. Yeah, he was just Chris Pratt. But I, I will say, because like Tactic, when we were all talking about this a little bit earlier pre-show, Tactic was kind of coming in hot saying like, this was a bad movie. And like, I don't think no, that's No, I said it was fair. just not a good movie. Like, I didn't say it was bad. It, it was, it was good. fine. It was fine. I'll give, it, I'll give it its credit and say it was fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm never going to see it. So. <laughs> but you should see Inside Out too with a, with a nice little segue to that movie. This was fantastic. It's no surprise that a new emotion and anxiety is introduced to introduced to the team as in addition to a few other emotions and it it goes into the understanding of how to manage your anxiety and and all of that and it's it's really good there's one scene that i literally got chills because boy did it evoke emotion it was it was done very well well and also it goes into puberty which as an adult like you look back and you're like damn yeah there is a whole mix up like your standard mental state is basically thrown out of a window who you are as a as a person is kind of thrown into question because you have to make a lot of decisions when you're a middle schooler and going into high school like you have to figure out what kind of person you want to be you have to figure out how you are going to react to situations and sometimes because of raging hormones it's completely out of your control and i think it does a really good job addressing puberty i mean like i said as an adult looking back on it through like the lens of this movie i think they got a lot of things really right and i think this is a really important movie too for kids who might not be at puberty yet or maybe approaching puberty or going through it to kind of get an understanding that hey like it's a very confusing tumultuous time and you are not alone in you know kind of feeling a little bit lost and different during this stage of your life but i will say its portrayal of anxiety was very good 
Joy continues to be a character that annoys the crap out of me in both Inside Out and Inside Out too. Yeah, she like, doesn't learn. Yeah, like not. I understand a lot of people love Joy. Not, not my fave. She was one of the major reasons I think where I didn't enjoy Inside Out as much as like the general public did. Um, but Inside Out too, I thought was much better. In fact, than the first it, movie, it peeled, I enjoyed it a lot better. It peeled Joy back as well, as, as, as assuming she's an onion. It, it peeled back some layers in Joy, which was nice. Yeah, my my take on Joy, it, like she, I love Inside Out, the first one. Her character is designed to be annoying, which, like, yeah, that makes a lot of people like the movie less. Like, I know you're not the only one, Nerd Bomber, and I totally get that. And it's a pretty dangerous thing for a movie to do. It is good to hear that she's paired back a little bit in Inside Out too, because I do think that that's uh, that's a good thing to do, in particular if you're adding different characters uh, that can have more screen time as well. So, I will certainly watch this one at some point. I don't know if I'm going to theater watch it, but. I'll be watching it when it hits Disney Plus, most likely. Very cool. Anything else to update on, or is it uh, is it now my turn? I it's guess. Turn. I have a very short update today as well. I've kind of just been continuing to read Some Like It Darker, which is the uh, Stephen King collection of short stories. Almost done with that. Then I'll be moving into something else. Also continuing to watch Your Honor, uh, which is our dramatic show. But we also need a funny show. And right now, that funny show is a show I've heard a lot about. It's been around for a while. And I finally started watching it thinking I wasn't going to like it. And I really do. That's a show called I Think You Should Leave, which is the Tim Robinson sketch comedy show on Netflix. I don't know if you guys have watched this show at all. It's very, the sketches vary in length a lot. Most of them are very, very awkward comedy. So it's bad. Nerd Bomber, in particular, I think you would struggle with it. This, this is I struggled with it. And that's saying something. There's like one or two. I thought I was going to struggle with it. Funny ones, but like they are like far and few between. I mean, you know, maybe let me be clear. And I think this is true of any sketch comedy show. Not all the sketches are home runs, but I think in any given episode, there's at least one that makes me audibly laugh, which I think is really all you can ask for from a sketch comedy show. So I'm enjoying it so far, and it should be a pretty short run to get through a lot of it. So that's kind of the extent of things for me. So at this point, we will move into the final section of the show, which is the quiz section. And uh, I'll give an update on the records. Nerd Bomber 9 and 5. Top dog. And I am at 8 and 5. Tactic 5 and 11, and Steven, 1 and 1. So uh, this week it is Tactic versus myself, and Tactic, I don't think I need to, I don't think I need to motivate you any more than you already are motivated. So Nerd Bomber, the floor is yours. All right, so this week's topic is Franz Ferdinand. Not the Archduke, but the band. As per There's usual, yeah, you would know them if you heard them. There's one song that you're going to know. I can't think of the name of it right now, but... As per usual, though, this is Price is Right style, so numerical answers you have to try to get as close as possible without going over to get the point. And you also have one lifeline of your choice. You either get to plus one the other person or use the number one, and that is one time per week. First question. Franz Ferdinand's breakout musical hit was their song, Take Me Out. How many video games has this song been featured in? Yeah, this is their one big song, I would I would say, not to diminish their, their level of talent. But uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. 47. A tactic? Six. Illegal vastly overshot. Tactic was almost right on the money. It has been featured in nine games. Madden 2005, NHL 2005, Sean White Skateboarding, Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero Smash I have Hits, no idea what song Sing this Star is. Pop, Just Dance 2, and DDR Universe 2, and Rocksmith. It's no a great song. At one point, if you my, my it, you answer was know. influenced. Yeah, my answer was influenced by how omnipresent it was at one point, just in culture. And yeah, I did overshoot, but I'll, uh, I'll own that. So speaking of culture, Franz Ferdinand partnered with Sony for the launch of the A-series Walkman music player. And a limited edition Franz Ferdinand themed music player was released by Sony Japan in January 2006. How many of those Franz Ferdinand Walkman A-series players were made? You said it was limited edition? Yes, sir. They made only 750,000 units. It's way too many. I'm going to say 500, and I'm worried that might be too many. All right, y'all busted. They only made 100. Yeah. Wow. Damn it. Wow. That's upsetting for, for yours truly. That was my chance. All right. So the next question, maybe you guys will redeem yourselves. What is the length of their debut self-named studio album in minutes and seconds? Who debut albums aren't that long. I'm going to say 36 minutes and 41 seconds. I think that's close. I think it's a shy too long. So I'm going to say it is 15 minutes 
Illegal gets this one. Shit. It was 38 minutes and 49 seconds. Yeah, long. I had I did not have a lot oh. of margin there. Yeah, I, I I I think I crushed on that one. All right, so we're tied, right? Yep. Two more questions Beauty. left. So please don't tie again because I don't have a tiebreaker ready. According to setlist.fm, how many times has Franz Ferdinand played the song, another one of their hits, Do You Want To, at a live show? Over their entire career? Yes. 2,000 times. This is tricky because uh, it's in my best strategic interest to plus one here, but I really think that's too high. <sighs> We've been through this. I'm going to say one. And he has used his lifeline to great effect. They've played it 826 times. <sighs> All right, final question here. The band is named after Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. I told oh, really? you it wasn't going to be about him, but psych, here we go. Uh, yeah. His assassination is largely considered one of the catalysts of the First World War. How old was he at his time of death? Who, boy. Well, he was an Archduke. He wasn't... Well, wait, is Archduke... Archduke is higher than Duke, probably. Uh, look, I don't know. 43. 44. God damn it. Okay, so Tectic got this, and you guys are tied up now because he was 50 years old. I mean, old. you had to see that coming. Yeah. We both saved our plus ones. How old was he? 50 years old. Okay, so we were so, pretty close. Which means she was voting for me to lose, by the way, with that goddamn. At it. that point, yeah. Rude. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. All right, we're going to go back to the Archduke, <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so when was... Franz Ferdinand made the heir of the Austrian throne. In what year? Boom. Answer submitted. Fuck right off. <laughs> Seriously. 1896 and you both said the 1900s. Okay. <laughs> this is your fault now. You're coming up with questions that are they're too easy to bust on. I don't even know who <laughs> any of these Ferdinands are. <laughs> you got to put some of this in the edit. This is too good. All right. How many music videos, according to Wikipedia, does Franz Ferdinand the band, not the Archduke guy, have? <laughs> I've submitted my answer. All right. So Illegal said eight. Tactic said 34. They have 31 music videos. Fuck! Whoa. <laughs> that is the best possible outcome of this whole thing. I mean, obviously, I would say that because I won. Well, Fantastic. That mean that moves me to nine and five, which means I am tied with Nerd Bomber once again. Tactic moves to five, moves to five and twelve. It's just when it rains, it pours. I don't know what to say, man. That one has to sting especially hard, I would imagine. So I will leave you to go lick your wounds, and I will encourage our listeners to head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave us a review there. If you liked what you heard, or if you didn't, you can head over to Twitter and hit us up there at the handles mentioned previously in the episode. And you guys can just keep doing you. We love our listeners, and we encourage you all to have a great week, stay safe, and keep on podcasting.